Hello and welcome to another episode of County Perspective, the show that focuses on Frederick County government, local programs and events, and a community that you live in. I'm your host, Brandon Rosa, and thank you for joining us. Now let's jump right in with some news from around the county. Each day on average, someone in Frederick County overdoses from heroin or a related drug. To help combat this crisis, County Executive Jan Gardner announced news about detox services in Frederick County. During her public information briefing on Tuesday, March 12th, Executive Gardner said that Maryland Treatment Centers, Inc. has been awarded up to $710,000 in grant funds to offer detox services in Frederick County. The company operates Mountain Manor in Emmitsburg, a treatment center that will be renovated to provide detox services for up to 18 people. Detox services will be available in approximately three months. Another 28 patients will be served in Frederick after the County Work Release Center is renovated to create separate space for the detox center. Renovations of the Work Release Center are estimated to last 18 months. Medically supervised detox services will allow individuals to safely recover from withdrawal under the supervision of medical providers. Last fall, the county requested proposals from providers of medically supervised withdrawal management services. Executive Gardner set aside $500,000 of county funds and as much as $210,000 in additional state funds were available through the health department. Sheriff Chuck Jenkins offered the space because he believes the work release center is underutilized. Executive Gardner thanked health officer Dr. Barbara Brookmeyer and the health department for their work to break the cycle of addiction by individuals of all ages. For more information, contact the health department at 301 600 1755 or visit frederickcountymd.gov slash health department. Find examples of success stories of those who recovered from addiction at takebackmylife.org. The county's annual budget should reflect our community's priorities and values. County Executive Jan Gardner wants to hear what your priorities are for the upcoming budget year. At her public information briefing on March 7th, Executive Gardner announced an online budget survey to gather public input on budget priorities. During the briefing, she shared highlights about major construction projects included in the preliminary capital budget and six-year capital improvements program and reviewed operating budget requests. Executive Gardner shared good news about school construction, libraries, parks, fire stations, roads, and many other projects. New school projects such as a new Urbana Elementary School, a new Rock Creek School, and a new expanded Waverly Elementary School are on track in the draft capital budget. The Capital Improvements Program will advance a new elementary school in the eastern part of the county, a 300-seat addition to Oakdale Middle School, renovations to Frederick Community College, new public libraries, and new park developments. The proposed budget will not increase tax rates. A public hearing was held at 7 p.m. on Thursday, March 14th in Winchester Hall. The meeting was streamed live on Executive Gardner's Facebook page, televised on FCG TV Channel 19 and HD Channel 1085. If you would like more information, visit frederickcountymd.gov slash budget or contact Acting Budget Director Kelly Weaver at 301 600 1185 or via email at kweaver at frederickcountymd.gov. Community members and 28 spellers gathered at the JBK Theater for the 12th annual Frederick County Spelling Bee that was held on Saturday, March 9th. For more than five years, Frederick County Public Libraries has been hosting the event at the JBK Theater. This year, spellers battled all the way to round 20. At the end of the Spelling Bee, participants had the chance to receive door prizes. Second place winner Nicole Chowdhury from St. John's Regional Catholic School won a trophy and a $500 check. This year's winner may look familiar. Eighth grader Charles Millard from Frederick Classical won last year's event as well. Charles received the trophy, a $1,200 check, and a night stay at the Gaylord National Harbor while he participates in the Scripps National Spelling Bee. We had the chance to speak with Charles after the bee. Let's hear what he had to say. Pretty confident for most of it until that word that I got wrong, Gatherum. I was really nervous because he couldn't figure out what he was saying at all. I knew the first part, Gatherer, and I knew how to spell it. And then the second part I knew was from Latin, which didn't really tell very much because there are a lot of Latin suffixes in English. 
Next month, the 12th annual Frederick County Spelling Bee will be airing on Channel 19, HD Channel 1085, and Frederick County's YouTube channel, so keep an eye out for it. The Frederick County Animal Control Center does a wonderful job rehoming pets to loving individuals and families. One of the newest programs that the shelter has implemented helps to curb the number of intake of animals and reduces the amount of animals housed at the facility. How exactly does the program work? Let's take a trip to the Animal Control Shelter to find out. Frederick County Animal Control and Pet Adoption Center and the 501C3 nonprofit organization, Frederick Friends of Our County Animal Shelter, better known as FOCUS, released a new program in January of 2019 called Project Hope. Project Hope's mission is to reduce the number of animals entering the shelter and to help keep pets in their homes when that is appropriate and possible. Frederick County Animal Control and Pet Adoption Center and Frederick Friends of our County Animal Shelter try their best to make sure that the animals leaving the shelter permanently stay with their new adopted families. This effort is performed by conducting background screenings and interviews with the adopters, but sometimes the adopted animal returns to the shelter. A lot of animals are surrendered to shelters across the country because people just are not aware of the resources out there. Here in Frederick County, about 50% of our intakes are from previous owners, people that have pets, and sometimes it's short-lived. They've had the pet maybe two or three weeks and they're giving up. I think some people will surrender animals that they've had for the animal's whole entire life, 10, 11, 15 years, and they just simply don't want it or don't know how to deal with behavior issues that might be occurring. Behavioral issues isn't the only reason why people consider surrendering their pets. One of the things that we try to do overall is reduce the number of owned animals that are turned into our shelter. We get animals that are turned in for various reasons. Moving and allergies are probably the two main reasons. Other reasons are behavior issues. The cat that they've had for 10 years doesn't use the litter box properly anymore. The neighbors are complaining because the dog is barking too much. So there's just a variety of reasons why people seem to throw their hands up and, and they feel the need to turn in their animal to the shelter. And that is why Project Hope was created. Project Hope provides resources and information for concerned pet owners. If somebody needs help, they can go to our website, www.focus.org, and click on Project Hope. There's a lot of information there, and they can just click on their area of interest, and it directs you to all kinds of different resources and other organizations. But if that doesn't solve the problem, or if you're just in a state where you need somebody to take you by the hand and help you find the resources that you need and help you resolve the problem, you can email us at project.hope.frederick at gmail.com and we will respond, our volunteers will respond within 24 hours. We try to help address each of the major reasons why people would consider giving up their pet. Frederick County Humane Society, Animal Welfare League, Uniting to Save Animals, otherwise known as U2SA, and the shelter all, and, and a number of other organizations and clinics have um, programs for low cost or even free spay neuter. Some of those same organizations have programs to help people with the cost of veterinary expenses. Maybe it's something unexpected that you weren't prepared for, or you're just having a difficult time with expenses. A lot of people are experiencing behavior issues with their animals and are struggling with that. Sometimes people feel that they're the only ones whose dog is lunging at other dogs on walks, or they're the only ones whose cat is having litter box problems, and they may not know that help is out there. Sometimes all they need is advice, and to be pointed towards the most helpful resources online. And sometimes they may need help from a professional trainer or behaviorist. And I should add that rehoming is another, another thing that we can help people with. So why should pet owners seek help from Project Hope before considering surrendering their pet to the shelter? Sometimes even the sweetest, most wonderful companion animal, when it arrives at the shelter, the shelter is a stressful place. And if they're in a kennel or a cage suddenly for the first time, surrounded by unfamiliar people and lots of dogs barking, they tend to be more likely to get sick. They get stressed out. The stress affects their health, and it can also affect their behavior. Questions about cats, dogs, or other types of animals, Project Hope will do everything they can to give pet owners the best answer. Most of the animals that we take in are traditional pets, so cats and dogs. Asking questions is always a good start. So if you have a question about your guinea pig or ferret, Project Hope folks, they're all volunteers. So if they don't know the answer, they'll contact us. Again, it's a very collaborative effort between Focus and the shelter. If you would like more information about Project Hope, visit Frederick Friends of Our County Animal Shelter's website at ffocas.org or call Frederick County Animal Control and Pet Adoption Center at 301-600-1546.
We're gonna take a quick break, but stick around. We have plenty more coming up on County Perspective. Welcome back to County Perspective. I'm your host, Brandon Rosa. Now in a bit, we'll learn how to make some homemade hummus, but first, let's find out what pet is looking for a new home in this episode's Featured Pet. Good friends are hard to find, which is why FCAC staff wouldn't dream of separating best friends Iris and Jinx. While they may seem an unconventional pair, she a 53 pound hound mix with a bad front leg, and he an 18 pound minpin with a mostly toothless underbite, these seniors are perfect for each other and will make a great additions to any family. They love to cuddle and play, not only with each other, but with the people in their lives. If you've been looking for a new furry friend or two, then look no further than Iris and Jinx. Are you an aging adult looking for a healthy meal? Well, FCG TV has teamed up with the Senior Services Division to create a cooking program just for you. Let's see what's cooking in the kitchen this week with Kitty Devilkiss. Hi, welcome to Silver Platter. Hummus is a terrific food. It's easy to, to eat, it's versatile, it's easy to transport, it's a great snack, um, and Sometimes it can be a little bit expensive when you buy it in the grocery in the, in the prepackaged. Today I'm going to show you how to make your own. It starts with a can of chickpeas. This handy can had a pull top lid. I've drained the liquid off of it and I'm going to put about half a can into this little food processor just to chop them up and, and get them the texture kind of smooth. Chickpeas are a healthy legume. We should probably have these in our diet once or twice a week just to increase the amount of fiber that we're getting. This is going to be noisy now. I've chopped those up. I'm going to add it to some I've already ground. And as you can see, the texture isn't totally pureed. I like that. I like that, that um, kind of rustic feeling to the, to the hummus. We're going to stir that into the other that we've already processed. And again, this is a terrific food because it's going to be made to taste. You can add a clove of garlic. I'm just going to run one through the press here. Scrape that off, stir that into my hummus, and adding just a drizzle of olive oil. You don't want too much. Probably for a can of beans, we're going to add maybe three tablespoons of olive oil total. Stirring that together, getting it blended. A squeeze of lemon juice just to help tighten the, the flavors and um, you could add a pinch of salt here if you if you want again seasoning to taste is always always best once it's blended thoroughly we're going to put it into a serving dish hummus is great on the go and actually the last time I was in the grocery I saw where you can buy little individual packets of hummus to take with you um, it's a great um, high protein snack to to have on hand it makes a great evening um, meal and it uh, it will give us good good protein here we go I'm serving it today with some pretzel chips you could serve it with pita you could serve it with raw veggies um, for a little garnish. You know, we bought the purchased one and it had chopped olives on it. I've bought it with, with chopped roast peppers. Um, but you could just serve it plain. I'm going to sprinkle just a little paprika. Again, that gives it a little bite. Just a, it's a hot paprika, so it's going to give it a little bit of flavor. And, and here we have easy peasy hummus. If you would like a copy of this recipe, please go to frederickcountymd.gov 
backslash senior services. Now that winter is winding to an end, it's time to get out and do something. There are multiple county departments offering classes, lessons, programs, promotions, and events for people of all ages to participate in. Let's take a look at a few of them. At the end of our show, we like to mention a few recent events along with things our viewers should keep an eye out for in the upcoming weeks. The first of these is an opportunity to leave a lasting impression on one of the county's newest libraries. For more information on this, we go to Jessica with the Frederick County Public Libraries. After decades of discussion and planning, we are finally going to open a new library in Myersville. And this library is really special in that we ran a capital campaign um, that included fully customizable dedication bricks. We thought it was important that our, our library is a reflection of the community in which it serves, so gifts of $100 or more designated for the Myersville Library would receive a fully customizable dedication brick. And this is a lasting gift that can commemorate a loved one, a family member, a neighbor, or even a beloved book. The bricks that we chose to use for this campaign are made locally. All of the revenue that is being generated from this fundraising capital campaign is being used to support the new Myersville Library. When you visit the library, you can see these bricks at the outdoor plaza, which is just outside of the historic trolley that's being integrated into the library. What is so special about these bricks is not only are they a lasting gift, um, it's part of our history and they will be there forever. If you would like more information, you can give us a call or check out our website at fcpl.org. March is National Nutrition Month. National Nutrition Month was created by the Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics to bring awareness to the importance of a healthy diet as well as maintaining a physical active lifestyle. If you would like more information about National Nutrition Month, visit livewellfrederick.com. Live Well Frederick provides information on balanced diets and healthy eating plans. If you're interested in losing weight or maintaining your weight, Live Well Frederick has meal plans just for that as well as exercise regimens called the 5210 program. That's it for this episode of County Perspective. Don't forget to follow Frederick County on social media in order to keep up to date on important news and events. We'll see you next time for a fresh look from a County Perspective.